Hello, and thanks for choosing Pebblehost. Today, we'll be taking a look at how to change your server's versions, as well as the different options you have for versions when you purchase a Minecraft server. As you can see, I've already logged into the server's panel, and I'm currently using a 4 gigabyte premium Minecraft server. If I scroll down towards the middle of the page under server type, I can go ahead and click the jar and pre-install menu. Now, before I click this, I want to go ahead and note that the server is currently running vanilla 1.14.4. Any vanilla jar file by default will not be able to use any sort of plugins, mods, or anything additional that's not already in the original game itself. In order to change this, I can click that jar and pre-install menu, and I'll be presented with a bunch of different options of categories I can use for my server. So let's go ahead and start at the top, which is Paper Spigot. Now, Paper Spigot is a fork of Spigot, which Spigot is a fork of Craft Bucket, and Craft Bucket is technically a fork of Vanilla. Now, all three of these things here will allow your server to use plugins. Plugins are essentially additional add-on items to your server that can add more commands into your server, change the server's gameplay, manage your server, and a whole lot more. Now we recommend Paper Spigot as it adds in a lot more configurable features to optimize your server. You can choose from Paper Spigot 1.15.2 and this is the auto updating version. Now what this means is whenever you select this and you go ahead and click save, this will change your server's version to Paper 1.15. Now because it's auto updating, whenever you restart or start your server, it's going to check if there is a more recent version of the 1.15.2 jar file. If there is, it will automatically update your server to that version. If we go ahead and select the version right underneath it, this will be the most recent stable build version of 1.15.2. While there aren't any auto-updating jars past 1.15.2, we have a variety of other versions we can select from, all the way going down to 1.8.8. The same thing will apply to Spigot. However, as you can see, we have a few different more options, and Spigot will actually go down to 1.7.10. As you can see next to it, we have a recommended RAM. Because I currently have a premium 4GB server, I have quite a bit of wiggle room with what version I can use. Now keep in mind, you can run any version you would like on your server. However, the recommended RAM determines what we typically see being used on servers in order to have stable performance. As you can see, older versions use around one gigabyte of RAM. And as we kind of go further in the versions, they use more and more RAM. This is typically due to less optimization or simply just more features being added into the game. Additionally, as you can see, Spigot 1.15.2 using regular Spigot is recommended you use four gigabytes of RAM. However, if we go to Paper Spigot 1.15.2, the latest version as well as the most recent stable build, both will use three gigs of RAM. Keep in mind, this is the recommended amount, so this is just essentially the bare minimum amount of RAM you'll need in order to have a stable server. If we go ahead and move down to Craft Bucket, as you can see, we are given the message, warning, Craft Bucket is outdated and no longer supported, and that we tell you to use Paper instead, which actually supports all of Bucket's plugins. Now, this is because, as we said before, Paper is a fork of Bucket, so all plugins that are from Craft Bucket will work with Paper Spigot. Now, just because these versions are out of date does not mean you can't use them. If we go ahead and select Craft Bucket 1.15.2, click Save. As you can see, it's added to our server's jar file selector. If we go ahead and click the Proxy tab on the jar file selector, as you can see, we are presented with a bunch of different options here. These proxy servers allow you to connect more than one server to a network. However, you will only be able to use the server running the proxy simply as the proxy itself. This means you'll need to have multiple other services in order to create a network. If you'd like further explanation, we have another bungee cord setup tutorial on this channel as well. If we go ahead and move down to vanilla, this is all of the standard Minecraft vanilla jar files, and these are the exact same versions as Mojang puts out themselves. Now, as you can see, currently as of making this video, Minecraft 1.16 is currently marked as unstable because it is a snapshot version. This is a common theme throughout the jar file selector. As we see numerous servers per day, we're able to determine what jar files are unstable or perhaps just completely outdated 
and as well as view the recommended RAM usage for your server. If we go ahead and move down to Bedrock, this will show all Bedrock versions. So we have Vanilla, PocketMine, and Nucket. While the standard Bedrock Vanilla version is the official Mojang server, we also have PocketMine and Nucket. If we go ahead and move down to the other tab, we have a few different other options here. So we have Tunity, which will require Java 11, and you can select this in the Pebble Host Loader, Thermos, Forge, and a custom jar. So Thermos will allow you to use plugins with Forge. This will require some manual installation, while Forge will also require some manual installation. And if you'd like to see some more information on that, we have another tutorial video on the channel showing you how to install Forge. That also applies to the custom jar. If you go ahead and choose custom jar, we can go ahead and name our own jar file and we'll need to upload that jar file to our server via an FTP client. Now, because we have a premium server, this enables us to have free pre-installs. So if we go ahead and go under to the pre-install section, we can go ahead and click CurseForge, and this will list all of the mod packs we offer from CurseForge's site. As you can see, some popular mod packs are on here, such as Sky Factory 4, All the Mods 3, and Project Ozones. If we go ahead and move to Technic, this is the same exact thing. Uh, these are all of the popular mod packs from Technic Launcher's site. If we move on to FTB, this will list all of FTB's mod packs, again, gotten from the official site. So we can choose all of these different uh, mod packs if we want to go ahead and choose one. For example, FTB Unlimited Reloaded, we can go ahead and click Save, and we'll get a message. And this message is going to tell us that by running this pre-install, it will delete all of the files from the service in order to run it. We can go ahead and click more information here, and this will link us to the knowledge base guide on pre-installs. But for now, we're going to go ahead and click run pre-install. So this will load our server with the applied script, which is feed the beast unlimited reloaded. And it says we need to reboot server to apply. So if we go ahead and just start our server because it was initially offline, this mod pack will be added on to our server. As you can see, the server is now booting up and it's changed the jar file to a Feed the Beast server and it's using that specific jar file from that pre-install. If we go ahead and click other pre-installs, we have a few different other options here. I mentioned before that Forge is definitely an option for your server and these are a few different Forge pre-installs for some popular Forge versions. All you'll have to do in order to use these is simply select the Forge version you want, click Save, click run pre-install, and then start your server. Additionally, in the other pre-installs option, we have uh, Forge Thermos, which we discussed previously, Crazy Craft 4, as well as two versions of SpongeForge. SpongeForge and Thermos are very similar in which they enable you to use plugins with your Forge server. With that being said, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you have any questions regarding anything we've covered in this video, feel free to join the Pebbleos Discord and we'd be more than happy to help you there.